Well, welcome to Frankly Speaking, broadcasting live from the Hasselson Studio on W. Uh, excuse me, I'm Big Fox. I'm, I got all mixed up here because we have a lot to discuss. I realized already uh, we got to get ready for our guest. We got to get everything set up. So thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. I want to highlight a couple things. Uh, some people have asked me, oh, I missed the show. Well, that's unfortunate. I think you should make this a part of your routine every morning starting at 7 a.m. You can watch rebroadcast on YouTube. You can find us at Big Fox on YouTube. Uh, we've gotten a lot of reaction there. Also, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, everybody here has been uh, putting forth a lot of effort, and they cut up the interviews that we do daily and uh, put them on our Facebook page. So you can catch, if you miss somebody from this week or last week, the full show is either up on YouTube or you can also uh, find it on Facebook, the clips of just the interview. So I wanted to highlight that. I know people are starting to make us a part of the routine, starting to make this a daily habit of tuning in right at 7 a.m. And we really appreciate that. A lot of people have been reaching out to me for contact information. They've been uh, sending me ideas for interviews. They've been sending me questions. We've got a couple questions for our guests this morning. Uh, Shimon County Executive Chris Moss. Uh, so thank you for that. And here is our contact information. Easy enough. Email frank at wydctv.com. That's what I got tongue tied on at the very beginning. Wydctv.com. Uh, uh, send it there, or you can text me. I'm getting a lot of texts, and I check the text throughout the program. Uh, so it's not too late to get those questions in. As I said today, we have uh, Shimon County Executive Chris Moss will be our guest, and then uh, tomorrow, Assemblyman Chris Friend. Looking forward to talking with Chris Friend. I look forward to talking to all our guests. I don't want to. Uh, uh, highlight anybody specifically Friday our new congressman just sworn in on January 3rd well actually I think it was a couple days later because of the house race but uh, that's when he was in Washington January uh, the 3rd Nick Langworthy he is going to be our guest he's the um, congressman for the 23rd congressional district so he'll be joining us right around 7 20 on Friday on Monday I thought I'd start looking ahead already to next week so you can plan Elmira Mayor Dan Mandel Look forward to talking with him as well. And on Tuesday, Hornell Mayor. So we're starting off the week with mayors. Uh, John Buckley will be our guest. So not too late to get those questions in to me for any of these guests. That's what's amazing about this program. It's interactive. As we've talked about at the bottom of the screen, you see the wave. You can even uh, get to that point of, of being interactive. And when you walk by, just wave on your way into work or your way into school. And we'll put it up there on the counter. So we have quite a few news stories to get to. Uh, this morning that we are, after a short break, um, going to highlight a couple of New York issues, some national issues. Uh, but as always, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, keep mentioning this, but I think it is important. If you're saying, well, Frank, I, I really like the interviews and I really, <clears throat> excuse me, and I really like uh, some of the news stories, but why not focus on this or why not this segment? As you know, this program is only a week and a half old. Uh, so we love taking uh, suggestions. We love hearing your comments, what you think works, what you think uh, doesn't work guests you'd like to see, uh, all of those things, just contact me at that information right there. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, jump right into the news. As I mentioned, Chemung County Executive Chris Moss will be coming up in just a little bit. So please stay with us. We need to take that short break, and then we'll be back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking. Let's take down that contact information again. Well, it's not too late to reach out with some questions for Executive Moss coming up in just a little bit. This is Frankly Speaking on WYDC-TV, uh, Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson's studio. And so glad you could join us. We're on beautiful Marcus Street in Corning. Let's take a look at some uh, quick issues of the day. One, because this person has come up so much in our recent interviews. Uh, Lee Zeldin coming so close to uh, the governor, uh, to beating Hochul, uh, did a great job. And as we had mentioned with that, one of our, <clears throat> excuse me, many guests, uh, that because of Zeldin's hard campaigning and the work that he did and getting out there, uh, many credit him with flipping the House to Republicans, at least four House seats. So a lot of people have asked, well, what's next? Uh, obviously, 
<clears throat> no longer a congressman, uh, didn't win the governor's race. So, of course, uh, as the media normally does, it's coming from the New York Post. I like the New York Post, but uh, trying to make it about the White House. Zeldin, as far as I know, no intentions of running for the White House, or that, that's not even uh, what this article suggests, but still playing. And, and this is, I think, a smart uh, Republican move because there is going to be a primary, not yet declaring who his favorite is. But that's not why I bring up this article, because I just wanted to give you an update on what Lee Zeldin is doing. He's launching a new corporate consulting company. Uh, he said it'll specialize in strategy, public relations, crisis management, and government relations. Uh, Quoting Mr. Zeldin in the article, it says, My experience comes from the military and national defense space. There are businesses that are focused on cybersecurity, national security, tech, and more. I've been an attorney now for over 19 years. I'm able to assist with that expertise. It's going to be interesting to see the few, what the future holds uh, for Lee Zeldin. Will he run for governor again? Um, some have speculated maybe a, a senatorial campaign. Maybe going back to Congress. Obviously, a very, very good campaigner, as we saw with the governor's race, coming as close as any Republican in a gubernatorial race since uh, Pataki won. So Lee Zeldin, uh, we tip the hat to him for the hard work that he put in and um, wish him all the best. Uh, hopefully, I've got some uh, wheels in motion that we could get him on the program just to <clears throat> catch up, because I know so many of you put so much effort into that campaign as well because we know it's not just one person when it comes to a campaign uh it's everybody around him so all of you that worked for him took out petitions uh, donated to him i'm sure you would like to know where uh, lee zeldin is headed next now we've been talking a lot of new york state issues and that's why i brought up uh, zeldin i thought this was interesting because this is a topic that has come up a lot in the past with Assemblyman Phil Palmasano, Chris Friend, this public campaign financing. At a time when, let's face it, the last two or three shows, all I've focused on is how bad we're, <laughs> we're doing economically in New York. Uh, this is going to be a disaster for taxpayers. Now, this is coming from the Buffalo News. Uh, they're spinning it, surprisingly in a way, spinning it as this is a positive. This should be uh, enacted immediately. So when we come back from the break, I'm going to explain a little bit about campaign uh, finance reform, why it is uh, trying to dupe us all into believing it's going to clean up campaigns because all it is is going to make things worse in the long run. So we are going to talk about that in just a little bit. That's uh, trying to keep you hooked. So you... <laughs> So you stay with us through this break. Thanks again for making us a part of your morning. We're proud to be broadcasting live from the Hesselson's studio on Market Street. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. I'm your host, Frank Akam. Don't forget, Executive Moss coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Akam. This interview brought to you by M.A. Neal Financial Services, and we're broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. I put you right on the spot. You didn't even have a second to sit down. That's all right. I'm gonna, good. I'm going to have you pull that mic up. A little different than radio. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, the sheriff told me you were right front and center. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know how you got him here that early, though. Yeah, I know. I know. I told him he can't wear pajamas coming in anymore. No, he did a great job. Uh, we have a lot to discuss, uh, obviously, because there's a lot going on in Shimon County. But I want to start with a couple, I think, really uh, positive stories. And I know you were part of this event, but the Elmira Express High School uh, capturing that Division One state title. Isn't that great? Isn't that? Uh, the pictures were wonderful. Yeah, you know, when you see uh, the kids from this area throughout the whole southern tier, they work so hard, mm -hmm. especially when you can recognize a couple of sports that don't get a lot of the publicity. Yeah. You know, it's always basketball, football, sure. sometimes baseball. But when you got bowling, Horseheads has swimming champ. I mean, it, it was it was fun to do. And uh, seeing the excitement on these kids' face, uh, and that's the first state title in Elmira Express High School history, I read. Yeah, and uh, to talk to them and ask you, you know, how long you've been practicing, how long you've been yeah. bowling, a couple of those uh, gentlemen or young men bowling since they're three, four, five years old. Right. So, did yeah. they give you any tips? Well, is it, your game better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. They wouldn't let me throw a ball. No, no, they, no. <laughs> they no, put the they bumpers would. on. The yeah, yeah, they would have had to. <laughs> the other thing, uh, because I think this is something that's overlooked uh, so frequently in our area, and that's how important our agri agricultural. Uh, 
life is in our area. And I know that this month you declared it agricultural month, which I'm having trouble saying this morning, but how important are our farms to this area? And they're so overlooked, it seems like, time and time again. You know, it is, and I don't know. You know, I know at times we've had uh, legislators from the state legislature come out to the southern tier mm-hmm. and areas see how important agriculture is, mm-hmm. uh, milk, dairy, yogurt, I mean, all those things. Uh, and it's unfortunate uh, when it comes to labor that uh, Albany doesn't see uh, yeah. what it's doing uh, to these farmers. Looking at the decisions coming from Albany, it's as if they really – want to hurt our farms at a time when especially during covid and all the uh problems we have with supply chain we were all praising our farmers Certainly. and now and now it's like we're attacking them out of albany it is you know and you know farming is just agriculture is just one issue out of albany it's, it's just unfortunate it doesn't seem to be getting any better in new york state mm-hmm. we continue to move to the left unfortunately mm-hmm. and i don't know you know i don't know why uh it, it, it's tough and i i feel bad for farmers right now we really have to do everything we can uh to support them that's why I'm glad you declare this uh, agricultural month. Uh, so a couple of quick things, because you kind of hinted towards Albany. I did, maybe. Uh, what do you see coming out of the budget proposals, uh, and how are they going to affect Chemung County? I would be hard-pressed to see if it's done by April 1st. I know everybody has their fingers crossed, but I think it's just there's, there's a big divide right now. Uh, one of the things we're working on is uh, the Medicaid grab by the governor. It uh, could cost Chemung County almost $2.3 million. Um, so what, uh, what they wanted to do was replace that money with AIM money, you know, and call it a wash, but a bunch of county executives got together a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. uh, in Albany during NISAC and just uh, let NISAC know that uh, that's unacceptable because you know what happened the following year, the AIM money will be gone. Exactly. So once we give up our share of Medicaid funding, so uh, hoping that will get resolved. It looks like uh, the money did get added back in in the single, uh, the House and the Senate uh, versions of the budget, so we'll see where it goes. But uh, infrastructure is always important when it comes to roads and bridges. Uh, drive through the city of Elmira, you can tell, you know, I hear a lot of, I'm like, well, or we don't do the city, but the fact of the matter is we travel through the city, so we want to do everything we can, uh, you know, to get these roads repaved, bridges kept up to par. Um, it's it's tough. I mean, Chimone County, we're in a decent financial position right now just because we've been uh, uh, fiscally conservative. Smart, yeah. um, but at the end of the day, uh, we have a sewer project that, that the cost just keeps going up. It was first, it was like $175 million. It's up to $275 million right now. Because of uh, inflation? Just because uh, of just Yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. we can't find the employees, and then, uh, you know, everything you need, the materials it's, How do you it's budget just through for that? The, you know you, you don't you at the can. end of the day you're going to pass that uh cost along to the people who use that system so obviously the folks out in the rural areas have septic systems and wells but you know all through horse heads big flats almira uh they're all in the sewer system so that cost is going to be spread throughout and you know it's funny because we all talk inflation right as soon as we get home from the grocery store <laughs> oh, do you believe how much i paid for eggs or you know everybody talks about it but you don't realize on the back end things like that how a project that is very important to the community ends up costing so much more because everything keeps going up it is i mean it is skyrocketing we've been to the legislature twice just to give them an update on where it was and i mean yeah. the, every time we go back the <laughs> yeah. cost increases by tens of millions of dollars and you know we can show them right on paper you know this yeah. is what materials cost at this point and that's what it's cost now and now the problem is labor you know there's no labor force out there so you have to get in line for that part of the project that you need because companies can't find the employees i mean we have an employee issue right at chemung county we have over 100 vacancies right now it is tough to find folks who either want to work are qualified to work will apply for the job uh the sheriff probably told you correction officers it's a big that's a big void right there can't get enough you know kids to take the test yeah we talked to him uh jim aller from steuben county Uh, they're essentially begging for corrections officers because it's such a safety issue yeah and what you don't want to do is lower the bar to the point where you're hiring people that really aren't qualified for the position because that's an important position Oh, exactly. You don't want somebody that's not prepared or, or maybe exactly. not up to the task. And you look at the age, to be honest with you, I know I think uh, the age for correction officer is 19, but that's very young age that's, to have somebody yeah. with the responsibility of watching, you know, a lot dozens of, age, of people right? who have uh, broken law yeah. in various ways. Yeah. We've got a lot more questions coming up. i got to take a short break, so stay with us. This is the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview, and this is Frankly Speaking, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking, broadcasting live on WYDC-TV Big Fox from the Hesselson Studio on beautiful Market Street in Corning. This interview brought to you by M.A. Neal Financial Services. Chris Moss is our guest. We have a lot to cover. We've covered quite a bit already, but I want to go back to the Medicaid proposal because what scares me about that is that even the hint at taking that money away seems like that's not the last time we'll hear about that. 
Probably not. You know, what's funny is uh, the governor used to be a countywide elected official. I, I believe she was a county clerk in Erie County. Um, and that county is going to get hit as big as just about any county outside of New York City. So how she could do that, she hangs out in Buffalo quite a bit still. Yeah. Uh, I know she has a relationship with the county executive there. So um, I'm guessing this will get solved in a manner, hopefully, that's... Uh, that, that everybody's okay with uh, but we definitely don't want the money in another form where next year's budget it could be decreased right so we want to keep the formula as it is now when you look at the budget proposal some people i don't think it goes far enough uh but looking at bail reform and hoke will say you know alter and change again i don't think it goes far enough and this a little bit in your history because I, I maybe not as executive but what do you think about the bail reform laws as they stand and do you think there will be a change they're not I'm, they're not working i don't think she'll get a change i know she's yeah. put some minor changes in there to give judges more discretion and so not forth enough. but i don't think it, i don't think it's going to happen and, it, and it's it's not enough i mean you can see crime and you, you can do anything you want with the numbers look i could take <laughs> the numbers and say they're working my way they could take the numbers mm -hmm. and see more but when you see people walk down the street and they're being mugged or attacked, or if you have people that don't feel safe, it's a problem. Yeah, and, and it's and it's come right here to the southern tier. It really I mean, you can go to downtown Elmira. You you, you go there. Everything's closed now. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, because of the pandemic, a lot of the restaurants, you know, they, they shut down at eight or nine. Mm -hmm. uh, the pizzerias. I mm -hmm. mean, every place. So things have changed. But uh, bail reform, I, I don't think it's been good for New York State. No. Um, you'll never get the Democrats to admit that because mm -hmm. they'll skew the numbers how they want to read them. But you know, when we saw the governor's race. Lee Zeldin came right. very close. I mean, and with everything that was going on for what you were, uh, the prices you were paying, mm -hmm. the crime, mm -hmm. if Republicans were ever going to win, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would have thought that would have been the it's time. Right. So it's really discouraging sometimes it when you see what's yeah. going on. What has to happen mm -hmm. to wake people up to say, you know what, let's get somebody more moderate in the governor's mansion. It's just so heartbreaking. And then you see these minor changes that Hochul is uh, attempting to make in the budget. Not even anything conservative. I mean, I would say none of them go far enough. And they're completely shut down by the yeah. far left in Albany. Yeah, I, and, yep, and, and Hasty and Stuart Cousins, yeah. they're not yeah. on the same page with yeah. her right now, and mm -hmm. I think they want to send that message, uh, you know, loud and clear. You know, they have they mm -hmm. have the votes they need to, to block what they need to block. How many people do we have to lose in New York, whether through violent crimes or through moving, before New Yorkers or our politicians wake up? You know, I, I don't know if it will happen. Like you said, the population decreased. Wow, I mean, people, are, yeah. they're, they're fleeing here. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. And those numbers, you can't lie about those numbers. Mm -hmm. They are what they are. Yeah. We're losing congressional seats. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. And I, I think, I don't know if it's going to change. I honestly don't. I don't I've really followed closely the last couple of governor's races. Mm -hmm. And when you look, dive into the numbers, how, no, I just it, don't know if it could ever be done. No, it, if Zeldin couldn't pull it off, and he did a great job, don't get right. me wrong, it's, n it's nothing on him, but that was so heartbreaking because you always want that glimmer of hope for the future. Yeah, it looked and, uh, it looked promising towards yeah. the last week of the race. I, <laughs> we're like uh, scorned lovers. We just keep going back and go, this is our year. <laughs> and I swear this is our year. It just hurts. But you mentioned COVID and how that affected all of us, right? We had Jack Wheeler, uh, the Steuben County manager, on the other day. You guys did an amazing job, I think, at the beginning of COVID uh, because everything was unknown, right? But you really got ahead of it as best as you could. How has things changed in Chemung County now that after COVID is, uh, you know, we've loosened restrictions. When you look back at it from beginning to now, what has changed? What did you like? What would you do different? I think one of the best things and something positive that the governor's office did is they did break the state up into mm -hmm. to sections. Region, so, you yeah. know what? Um, we got to speak with other county administrators, county executives mm -hmm. in our eight counties. Yeah. We were back and forth all the time. We had our own meetings, you know, with each yeah. other, conference calls on a regular basis. So we all kind of knew what we were doing and we want to stay kind of in lock and step with each other. So nobody was doing something totally out, mm -hmm. you know, because if I do something in Shimon County, Jack might call and say, boy, are you going to do this now? <laughs> My residents are going to ask me why we are. So we tried to stay on the same page with, you know, the decisions we made. But um, those relationships really lasted throughout the pandemic and then after the pandemic. So it's great. Yeah. Uh, James Garner, um, the county executive in Broome County, Democrat. Mm -hmm. I call him on a regular basis. Oh, sure. He texts me on a regular basis. We shoot stuff back and forth. What mm -hmm. works, what doesn't work. Um, from the pandemic, uh, a lot of folks wanted to work at home. Yeah. They want to continue to work they, at home. So still, now we're, we're I mean, we've got everybody back to work, but we are looking at some positions that did well from working from home, yeah. which can be done in some cases. So, you know, we're looking that, at that. But again, uh, some of the employees we lost during the pandemic, they don't want to come back to work or haven't come back to work, uh, which leads to a lot of the vacancies that we have. Everything's basically open back up now. Um, uh, the nursing facility, obviously, that that yeah. was tough. We had some deaths there uh, due to the pandemic. 
Um, but I mean, th things are getting better. Uh, we've got ARP money. We're trying to decide how to spend that. Uh, we've got some tentative plans. Some have been passed by the legislature. There's still some money out there on the table uh, yeah. to make some decisions as to you know what direction we want to go. It is interesting because I think once you get into the habit of working from home, it's got to be tough for some people who for two or well, three years now have Certainly. worked from home. How do you say come back in the office? Yeah, you wonder. And I, you know, in New York City, apparently there's a lot of office buildings there that are still empty because, yeah. you know, if the companies haven't left New York State, they are continuing to let people work from home. Yeah. And I guess if it can be effective, it's probably there's a cost savings there. You don't have to pay the electricity, the yeah, rent, right. and the lease in the building. So, right. uh, yeah. It, it's hard to tell. And you mentioned you have a lot of vacancies at the county level. What are you doing to try to uh, highlight that for people that may be interested? Just public relations? Well, you know, we do have a job fair coming up next month. Oh, great. So we have a, yep, thanks for asking. Yeah. We have a job fair coming up next month. Um, I think we're going to come out with a date and time probably by the end of the week. I mean, and we're looking for seasonal employees. We're looking for permanent employees okay. uh, throughout the Department of Social Services, uh, the airport, the sheriff's office, buildings and grounds. So, I mean, we have... Okay. Everything. There's there's <laughs> quite a few openings there for for individuals, and we're even looking for some summer hires. So okay. college kids that come back Perfect. for either some internships yeah. or just looking for summer work. So as soon as you get that information on the finals, would you please send it to us? I we'll certainly make, will. We'll make sure to highlight it Definitely. on the program because I think that it's the kind of the weird part about COVID. There are people that want to work that can't find jobs, but then there's people that don't want to work, and it's kind of created this weird bubble. It has, and when you have fast food restaurants paying eighteen, nineteen, twenty dollars an hour. It is tough to be competitive in yeah. municipal government. So, I mean, we have labor agreements that we have to abide by. Sure. So, for instance, if we, if our starting salary is $17, $18 an hour, although there's benefits, yeah. if you can go make $20 an hour, what are kids going to do that are $17, yeah. 18 19 So, we, we've got to become more competitive, but those are labor contracts. So, you know, we've got to go back to the drawing board with them to increase those salaries, and that's at a cost to the taxpayers. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a revolving issue. Yeah, and it is everywhere, too. I mean, yep. we hear from uh, just about everybody we've spoke to and it's it's amazing to me I, I guess when COVID hit I wanted to get to work right because you were bored out right. of your mind right but I, I other people I think I kind of used to and I guess you can't blame them we uh, received a great email from a viewer uh, this is from Kyle and he asked a question with one year in with a new tenant at the first arena how are things progressing well I tell you my perspective from the county executive yeah. uh, municipal government shouldn't be in the arena business I got you. Uh, the arena is uh, owned uh, and operated by the IDA, not the county. Mm -hmm. um, so I really don't have a whole lot to do with it um, other than the previous IDA board was appointed by the county executive. The legislature pulled a fast one and took that out from under me. So now they've appointed the new IDA board. Uh, unfortunately, it's not being supported uh, to the manner it needs to be to be profitable, even to break even. Oh, um, so uh, there's going to be some there's some rough waters that I'm not going to tell you like it is. Yeah. I've, I've made it clear to the IDA board that I am not satisfied with what's going on right now. And it needs to be addressed and dealt with uh, before the county gets heavily involved in it. And this has been kind of a consistent from your whole time. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. We looked at the performa. A lot of things didn't happen from financial backers not coming forward like they were going to, hopefully, in the original plan. Um, the attendance isn't what it needs to be. I mean, you know that... On paper, at least, uh, there has to be two events there throughout the entire year just to break even. I mean, uh, the electric bill is astronomical. I'm you sure. wouldn't even, you, you can't even imagine. And it's it's tough. I think the gentleman in there is trying to do the best that he can. Sure. But to be honest with you, at the end of the day, why do we continue to pour money down a black hole? Um, but the building is there. Uh, what are you going to do with it? It's had many capital improvements just over the last 18 to 24 months yeah. from a new roof to HVAC. Uh, they did some work on the ice plant. So, I mean, it's there. So what do you do with it? I mean, if it was profitable, somebody would come in and bought it. Right. And, and that hasn't happened. So at the end of the day, uh, we have to come up with some type of plan is what's the future of the arena? Is it going to be like Broome County where the taxpayers foot the bill for the arena? Because uh, I don't think you're going to find any more private sector investment just to come in and just run it at a loss. Mm -hmm. I guess his follow-up question of do you believe the lacrosse league will be back probably isn't relevant. <laughs> right after that. There are a <laughs> lot of big problems that need to be okay. that, that, that need to be addressed yeah. um, other than hockey. And I mean, I know those are the type of events that fill the arena. Sure. I've heard some good things about the lacrosse. I haven't seen it personally. I am a season ticket holder for hockey. So, okay. you know, I, I did my part. I got three tickets yeah. to, to support it. But I'll be honest with you, when you go there, I mean, we got 70 
thousand plus people in Chemung County alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you go there, we can't fill up an arena with 2,500 for a hockey game. And you really have to ask yourselves, you know what is is hockey it? I'd much rather I'd much rather do away with minor league hockey and have Elmira College down there. Right. Hey, why isn't Elmira College men's and women's? Let's outfit it for them. Walk That's down the street point. and play. Uh, they've had a few games there that have been successful. I mean, I know they have the domes, but the fact of the matter is. The arena's there now. We've got to find some use for it, and we've got to come to an agreement at the end of the day of who's going to pay the bills for it because it's probably, I mean, you know, some there's been some questions about why is the county just taking over? And, again, I don't believe municipalities should be in the arena business, but Broome County can tell you exactly it's right. not profitable and it's going to cost you. All right, we got to take a short break. Stay with us. This is the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview right here broadcasting live from the Hesselson Studio. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson Studio on Market Street and Corning. This is the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview with Chris Moss. A couple last things. I know it's March, so it's uh, not exactly the new year, but what are some of your priorities looking at 2023? Uh, we do have some ARP projects uh, for uh, Park Station, uh, the fairgrounds. I mean, it, a lot of times, uh, capital projects over the years, you don't think of what needs to be done to right. pavilions, uh, playgrounds, that sort of thing. So we're we are working on that. Um, the district attorney's office needs a new location, so we've been working on that feverishly over the last couple of months. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're out of space. Uh, roads, uh, blacktop plants will open up next month, so we'll start uh, many of our road projects. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot in the hopper to do, and there's always, you know, the daily stuff that, that it comes up as well. I've been kind of intrigued watching uh, Shimon County in general. You guys do have some life coming to you, you know, with some new businesses, uh, new restaurants and bars. It's been kind of fun to watch. You can always use more, don't get me wrong, but... It's nice. Yeah, you know, uh, sales tax revenue has been up for Shimon County. Oh, We've been great. very fortunate uh, over the last couple of years. It's come in higher than anticipated. Obviously, we always budget conservatively because that's the type yeah. of county executive <laughs> I am, as is my budget director. But uh, we've been happy with what the numbers have come in at. In restaurants, I mean, go by, if you go down 86, just look to your left or right, right. when you come through Consumer Square. Mm-hmm. The steakhouses, I mean, they're always busy. Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday night, they're packed. Mm-hmm. There's people outside waiting in line. So, you know, that's a good thing. So people still are, are going out to eat. But, you know, as inflation continues to creep up Mm -hmm. there, you worry about whether there's going to be a recession or not. So we're very careful with, you know, how we spend at the county level. You know, and we stress that to our department heads and elected officials, and they all do a great job. I mean, they they get some of the credit for our fund balance being where it is. When you look at some of those restaurants, like you said, so crowded all the time, and there's another industry that's been hurt so bad by uh, people not working. Because you sometimes go to, I'm not going to name any names, of course, but it's everywhere. You go to a restaurant and half of it's blocked off because they don't have the employees for the other half. Exactly, and that's why a lot of them are closing early. I'll say, boy, why do you close at 9 o'clock now? A lot of people want to come out at Mm -hmm. 9, 10, 11 Mm -hmm. o'clock. They can't find the staff to do it. They're like, it's just not worth what you have to pay somebody to come in. You know, it takes the profitability away. And then materials alone, you know, the containers that chicken wings go in. Some of the stories I've heard from some of the vendors there, the prices have just gone so out of sight. That's why you pay what you pay for a dozen chicken wings. Don't you miss the styrofoam? from in plastic bags for heaven's sakes. At least I, I miss the price. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, <know. laughs> I go to Sarah and get them. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news here on Frank. There you speaking. go. Yep, right across the border. <laughs> get your plastic bags. <laughs> but it is every little cost. And as a state, we do it. But now, sadly, as a country, we're doing it too. Every cost just hurts all these small businesses. Yep. And even the larger businesses. I, I don't know how they survive, to be honest. No, I don't. I mean, I know some of the smaller businesses have grouped themselves together to yeah. buy things in bulk. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it is, it is tough anymore. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, we don't hit a recession session the prices start to go down but uh, as the interest rate continues to climb uh, I think they're gonna you're gonna slow the growth yeah. sooner or later and one thing completely unrelated at least with the styrofoam containers they didn't leak everywhere I, I you don't have to say it I'm saying it oh no I'll you say put it in I the back seat of your car and now it reeks especially on uh, St. Patrick's Day corned beef yeah. and cabbage the guy that came that? up with a paper straw <laughs> if I could find him I mean give me a break <laughs> I, I, I tell you oh uh, I having fun this morning uh what are some of the concerns on moving forward we've talked about you know population decline and there's got to be some things that are grow on your mind at night you know what we we really have to it's hard crime we, we've got right. to find a way if people are afraid to go out of their houses after dark mm-hmm. or i mean you know go get something to eat or go to a movie right. we really have to focus on that number one um it's tough uh 
we, we have a we have a fair number of shootings in Shimon County, most of them in the city of Elmira. Thank goodness, most of the time people aren't hit. You know, right. it, it's drive-by shootings. Yeah. That, you know, they're shooting up houses. So, you know, trying to get a control on that. City's doing the best job they can with the resources they have. Mm-hmm. You could always use more cops, but right. the money's got to come mm-hmm. from somewhere. Um, I, I applaud the city on their effort. They have some camera, a new camera system mm-hmm. that's been very beneficial to uh, criminal investigations. So good for them. I hope that continues to work for them. So, and they're um, all doing amazing. Whether it's the sheriff, the police force, they're they're doing so much with so little yeah it's it, it is tough and you can only do just so much mm-hmm. um anymore and and the cost just to outfit you know these young men and women yeah. uh, a patrol car alone you're talking seventy five, eighty thousand yeah. dollars by the time this thing is all outfitted for what they need uh to go out on the road the training um we're having a hard time the, the sheriff's having a hard time just filling up vacancies for deputy sheriffs yeah. and then there, there's a training component you go to the police academy for six months yeah. and then you come back for another couple months to be on fto i mean before you can get uh, a new man or girl out on the street yeah, yeah. you yeah. know it's, it's a year and the problem is and we talked about it with uh sheriff schramm the media wants to attack our police forces any chance that they get but if you look at it like you said safety issues we're all concerned going out at night walking when i walk in in the morning you're thinking you know do i have to worry and yet we want the safety but we want to attack the people that are helping us with that yeah it's tough i mean i just think uh, for some reason uh, you know most of the media when something bad happens involve the police that's what people you know Mm -hmm. they can sensationalize it yes Uh, whether it's true or not that's what people want to see that's what gets the headlines but i mean i can tell you after doing it for over 30 years Mm -hmm. I, i don't know of anybody that goes to work i, I hope i can beat someone up today yeah. shoot somebody today that's just not the mindset <laughs> no. all the small things that are done mm-hmm. on a daily basis from you know changing tires to getting a bat out of someone's there's just tons of stuff these men and women do that you just you know, people don't think about mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's unfortunate yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't tell a friend or relative my kid to go into police work today mm-hmm. i truly wouldn't there's such a lack of respect mm-hmm. for that position i would i'd say nope go do something else and that's got to be why they're having so much uh, problem with retention and keeping people because why it's not even a thankless job anymore it's a you're getting attacked for doing a good job yeah i mean look at these bigger cities they're yeah. leaving in droves they mm-hmm. can't find enough officers yeah. for you know from new york city all these big cities i'm mm-hmm. like wow it, it is tough nobody wants a job and i don't blame them no safety is going to be a number one concern i think for all of us and that's the poll showed it with lee, lee zeldin so we got to keep trying i guess yep. but right before we go uh i wanted to mention that you have a podcast did this start because of covid uh, we started during. We started, I think, about two years ago during COVID. It's called yeah. Behind the Politics yeah. with Chris Moss. Yeah. So we grab a different topic uh, every month that we yeah. talk about it. And uh, matter of fact, uh, we're just finishing up. I think it comes out probably Friday. And uh, we met with the bowling team oh, and uh, Horsehead's Cullen Cole, who won yeah. the gold in the states for uh, the 50 meter. Yeah. See, this is easy. People think it's tough, but podcasting and doing this on air, it's easy. Uh, I don't I, know. Yeah. Well, I got a guy that helps me put it all together. <laughs> so you is. know, I just show yeah. up and talk. Yeah. He, he does the hard work. Uh, has it been fun for you though? You know, it's it, it's a good time. Uh, people watch it and they're like, wow. And, uh, yeah, sometimes we can kind of say what we want. And it's, uh, yeah. it's a little different perspective from behind the politics. Well, you know, it, like uh, the bowling team and, the, and the, the swimming, that was great. That's not something you get to do on a regular basis. Right. So that's a good part of this yeah. job. You know what I mean? It's not dealing with the legislature mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. complaints or, you know, my mailbox got hit by the snowplow again. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, those, those types of uh, everyday complaints. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. I hope we can do this on a regular basis. I don't want to take away from your podcast, so if we're competing. <laughs> <laughs> There's no competition. Okay, you right. invite me back anytime. Okay. I'll be more than happy to join well, you. Well, thanks so much for being on. We'll talk soon, okay? You got it. Take care. All right. This has been the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I want to thank again Shimon County Executive Chris Moss for being our guest. That was a fun interview. We covered a lot there. Um, and I want to thank uh, uh, Kyle specifically, but people who have been sending in questions for all of our guests. As I said, I'm going to try my hardest to always get to those questions uh, and because it's the things that directly affect you. And that was a really great answer um, from Moss and a great question overall. So thank you for sending those in. Again, let me just put my contact up as I'm looking for my one piece of paperwork there. There is the best way to contact me. All right. I want to wrap up because I've got a couple of local things I want to bring up. But I, I know uh, because um, Executive Moss stopped in, I wanted to get right to him because we had so many questions. So I want to go back to that story we brought to you earlier on and why this is so detrimental. And it, I'm, I'm glad we waited because talking uh, with the executive, you know, we are talking about the struggles. And maybe you're saying, Frank, you bring this up every day with New York. But look at our guests. 
our guests are bringing it up and it's not coming from me. Uh, we all see the concerns, whether, like they said, they, can, they have trouble hiring. But more importantly, you've got people leaving. And when the people leave our area, whether it's the wealthy, because we're always attacking the wealthy, or whether it's the common everyday guy or girl leaving the area. And that, that text, let's just make it clear. Albany's not going to spend less <laughs> because we have less people. So who makes up that difference? It's you and I. It's the people that want to stay here. So when I see something like this, again, um, the Buffalo News is reporting this in a way that it should be implemented. Uh, this was the, the main story that I found on it. But I believe this is going to be disastrous uh, for our state because we already know we've got the highest taxes. We've been talking about this all week, the worst place to retire. But if you look at camp, they call it public campaign finance reform. And they make it sound like this is going to be great. It's going to make us all... Um, or make campaigns cleaner. Um, it's going to be make it fair for everybody. No. What this is asking you to do is let's say I'm running for office. And you say, boy, I don't like Frank. Okay. You don't have to donate to me. That's fine. But you say, oh, I do like Frank. Here's some, some money. That's the way it's supposed to work. What this does is make you the taxpayer. Even if you can't stand me, you the taxpayer are going to help fund my campaign. Sometimes... This campaign, uh, and they never tell you it's the taxpayers that are matching the funds. But you are as much as 12 to 1 on donations. So you give me a small donation, $5. Taxpayers are giving 12 times that to fund my campaign. Uh, and you're probably saying, Frank, this makes no sense. I mean, I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. Exactly. That's the point. It makes no sense. And the fact that they're making the argument that this is going to clean up politics, it's only going to make matters worse. As a matter of fact, when you think about um, people that are already in office, normally find it easier to fundraise. It's just the nature of politics because they've been in there. They have the name recognition. That person who raises more is going to get more taxpayer dollars. Now, they have... Um, they have little things in there where smaller donations get more and, and like that. But I'm telling you, this is going to be just another burden to New York taxpayers with no benefit to us. Why should we, when we're broke as a state, why should we as taxpayers be giving more money, in this case, to politicians running for office? It makes absolutely no sense and just another uh, boneheaded and wrongheaded decision coming from Albany. So let's take another short break and then we're going to wrap things up. I've got a couple things to highlight that I know that you're going to want to attend. So you'll have to stay with us. Let me take that short break. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox broadcasting live from the Hesselson's studio. We have a couple local events that I want to highlight uh, before we go to one last short break and then wrap up for today. Uh, the first was a quick story I brought to you yesterday or a quick uh, spotlight I brought to you yesterday. Again, uh, there has been extension on that scholarship. This coming from Assemblyman Phil Palmasano's office. Uh, so if you are a resident of the 132nd Assembly District and you want to submit a scholarship application, there are uh, $4,000 uh, scholarships um, in athletics and in academics. You can find out more there, but I would recommend calling uh, Assemblyman Palmasano's district office to get all the information you need. That has been extended, again, till April 3rd. The other... Uh, thing I wanted to highlight, for lack of a better word, thing. Um, let's see if I can get that up there. That was our question that we asked earlier. Thank you to Kyle again. I forgot to pop that up on the screen with uh, Moss. Community Blood Drive coming up. Uh, our good friends at the Forest View Gang Mills Fire Department proudly hosting. I saw this flyer just yesterday. Proudly hosting a Community Blood Drive. We know at this time uh, there is a, a huge need for blood in our area and throughout uh, the country. And the Red Cross is doing such an amazing job. So I wanted to bring this information to you. If you see at the bottom of the screen, uh, the number or the uh, website, you can make an appointment there, schedule an appointment um, so that you can be, do this in a timely fashion. But please, if you can, go to the Community Blood Drive at Forest View Gang Mills Fire Department. You'll see the address there is painted post. Uh, that's the mailing address, so it's more Gang Mills area. Uh, it's at the Forest View Gang Mills Fire Department tomorrow from noon to six. We've got to take one last short break and then we'll be back. Stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, 
Big Fox broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio on beautiful Marcus Street in Corning. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. You'll see at the bottom we're up to two waves today. I think that's a new record. Uh, one last event I wanted to highlight because, uh, the, uh, yep, there it is. A great man. This was to honor Father Lou. There's going to be a toasting and a tasting, a local uh, wineries, breweries, distilleries. And this is a benefit to honor Father Lou uh, for the Catholic Charities of Stu Ben in Livingston. You can find out more about tickets there at that website. It's at the Radisson Hotel here in Corning. And that is tomorrow from 5 to 7.30 uh, p.m. It's $35 in advance, $40 at the door. You can also stop in to Connor's Mercantile or Bottles and Corks to purchase your tickets and I think it goes without saying but you must be 21 to participate in the alcohol tastings so I want to thank today oh by the way send your uh, any event that you're having send that in to me uh, we would love to uh, highlight that um, I think it's more about the community right we keep talking about wanting to be a, a, an important voice an important part of the community and that's one way we are proud to do it so get your information to me thank you again to Shimon County Executive Chris Moss for being a part of the M.A. Neal Financial Services interview segment of Frankly Speaking. Tomorrow on the program, Chris Friend, Assemblyman Chris Friend, will be our guest. On Friday, Congressman Nick Langworthy, our new congressman in the 23rd Congressional District. We look forward to talking with him. On Monday, Elmira Mayor Dan Mandel will be our guest. And on Tuesday, Hornell Mayor John Buckley. So it's not too late, obviously. Still ways away. You can get your questions because you can get your questions in last second, really, uh, at that texting number or over email. I check it right before we go on the air. So contact me if you have any questions or just want to reach out in general. Uh, but we appreciate everybody who's been on the show so far. If you've missed any of our guests, because we've had so many great interviews so far, not because of me, because of our guests, uh, you can find them on YouTube. Uh, our, all of our uh, shows are on YouTube, and you can also go to Facebook a little bit later on in the day, and you will find, uh, that's a Big Fox Television Facebook, and you'll find just the interview segment. So if you missed anything, uh, that's two easy ways to catch up. And I, maybe, maybe you want to binge watch starting today. I hope that you do. And I do hope that you make us a part of your morning routine. I appreciate everybody who's uh, reached out, stopped by, said hi, and said that they like the new program. We're proud of it here on Big Fox and uh, very happy that you are a part of it and making it a part of your morning. So have a great day, everyone. Again, thank you to Shimon County Executive Chris Moss. We look forward to talking with Assemblyman Chris Friend, which I'm sure will have many of the, the same concerns and the same comments, uh, but we look forward to talking to all of our local representatives, our local officials, and our uh, community leaders. So have a great day, everyone. This has been Frankly Speaking. I'm your host, Frank Akum, and we've been broadcasting live from the Hesselson Studio right here on historic Market Street in Corning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>